Now that we're starting back up in the heart of winter, it's cold outside on January 20th, so I really don't feel like hiking. Instead, I'll focus on cooking. I'll be making donuts for you or their filled counterpart, the Krafen. I'll scroll the recipe on the screen so you can pause it. I've chosen to use type 1 soft wheat flour, then granulated sugar, which is our sucrose, and honey, I preferred the acacia one, and then some soft butter left at room temperature. Partially skimmed milk, salt, eggs, and various seasonings. The special ingredient is the saffron that I've decided to put in, not traditionally in the recipe. Now on the screen, you'll start seeing the first images roll by, and I promise the discussion will be as succinct as possible. We have a bowl with milk and a whisk, where I've already added the yeast and honey. The milk has been previously warmed, so I'm basically going to show you the flavorings that I'm going to mix with the soft butter. Now I'm holding the vial of orange extract, then I'm going to take the vanilla bean, and then I'm going to go ahead and add the saffron as well. Why do I mix them with butter? Because the butter allows me to distribute them better and enhance their flavor within the dough. To extract the seeds from the pod, I first put it in a bain-marie, a little bit in the water to soften it, and then with this very sharp trekking knife, I will slice it open and extract it by scraping the inside. Great, let's move on to assembling the next steps. In the following part, you'll see the different components come together. So now I'm combining the different flavorings with the butter, and then we'll knead the dough. So, in the images that are playing, we can see exactly these phases. We're going to scrape the seeds out of the pod with the small knife, and we are combining them with the butter. If you are patient, you can really extract a lot of flavor from a single pod. So then we move on to softening the butter. I found the butter was a bit too solid because I didn't take it out of the fridge in time. So I advise you to do that. In the next picture, we add eggs and sugar to the flour and start kneading. As you can see, first I try to mix the sugar well into the flour, and then I add my eggs. The next step is the kneading phase, which is rather sticky at the start because we haven't added the butter yet. So we're taking care to mix the flour and saffron with only the milk and eggs. When we've kneaded it thoroughly and the dough is smooth, we'll go ahead and add the butter and other flavorings. We add it when we can do it without making the dough hard to knead. Then we move over to a steel work surface and add the butter. In small flakes so that it can be absorbed evenly and easily by the whole dough.
patients, we need to work on it for a long time until it becomes homogenous again. Here guys, the dough has rested, the gluten network has reformed. We are now going to do the reinforcement folds to make sure it can maintain a certain firmness during the leavening phase. Clearly the dough is always very wet because there's butter and with our tool we help ourselves by detaching it. So stretching it again as much as possible before making the new folds. Here's another fold. We're always experimenting like this. Now let's let it rest a bit, press it down and wait. Here we are again, let's detach our dough with the help of this spatula and stretch it as much as possible to spread it out. Now the dough is practically dried out, it retains a little stickiness. It's virtually a dry dough. We can work on it one more time. Let's let it rest quite a bit, then shape it into a ball and put it back to rise. because this dough needs to rise, and quite a lot too. Then I'm going to do a little perlatura, just like we do with bread. Here it is. This is called perlatura. Clearly it's a bit sticky underneath, so we always try to detach it with this tool. We put it back in our bowl, we take the office lines, even if it's not really necessary. And we sticky them somewhere. There you go. 12 hours of leavening, covered in a cling film or even just a plate. So we need to limit the oxygen. At this point I've decided to skip the cooking phase. Traditionally, this is done in oil. I chose sunflower oil, high oleic. And I brought it to quite a high temperature. So within a few seconds, a minute at most per side, the different pieces of graphene are ready to be removed, dried, and maybe stuffed. 